In this next example, we're going to do several things at one time. Uh, now, I call it the, an expression based on a multi-value pick, but we're going to also demonstrate how you can have a category that has a category. We, we kind of talked about this in another one. Uh, and then that's used, and each time the category is a multi-pick value. So it's a category that will be a multi-pick on another category, and then that will be a multi-pick in a, a subject form. Uh, what I'm going to do is also show you how you could have a derived field then that kind of monitors the multi-pick so that if a value, a certain value is picked out of that list, uh, an expression in that derived field will be able to know that it was picked and do a, a, an operation of some kind. Uh, the other thing we're going to do in this is, uh, well, I may as well open it for you. It's S03 E14. I'm going to show you uh, the multi-pick field. That, that's a list box, or that, that's our multi-pick lookup, I should say. Um, there are ways to monitor which values. Remember, there there is a record for each value that appears in the multi-pick. Just to remind, uh, jog your memory here. If I go in here, we got a little thing where it's a game, and we have a record for different game uh, for the games that we've played. Basically, instances of the games that we played, um, and then for each game, uh, there's some characters that are that we could pick in that for that game. And uh, I think this is from Dungeons and Dragons, something like that. <clears throat> but anyway, it's a multi-pick. And if I go into this multi-pick, you'll see that it's just like our other multi-picks, except there's another field that I added, which is a category for the types of, uh, they call character stats. It's kind of like attributes of the characters. Uh, there's whether they exhibit strength or charisma, or whatever, and you get multiple on some of these. In fact, if I go down, you'll see a few of them that do have multiple picks on them, like uh, the monk has dexterity and wisdom. Uh, so it's this is just a, a cat, basically the uh, the foreign key field from the other category. So we got a category that's uh, called uh, character stats that's categorizing this category table uh, category uh, subject that's a uh, game character and then it'll categorize the games all right so it's kind of interesting because if you looked at that when I did that I had that one opened up and then I could go in here and open up one of for that and you can't get to the other ones until well you're not supposed to boy I wonder how that happened have to fix that you should oh well, they're not gonna let you do anything anyway so anyway but you basically could do uh, your lookup on this and then go in here do a lookup on this and take care of things um, what I want to do though in this game is there's there's something called the baseline and b by the way uh, this gets really deep all right in the real game okay I'm just going to show you one little aspect here uh, one of the students this semester actually is trying to do something like this <clears throat> so let's say, and I'm going to really constrain this, let's say in the case of if they were to pick Barbarian, there's a baseline um, strength score or something like that, and you want an adjustment for the Barbarian. Now what this is showing right now is the adjustment for the Barbarian is zero because it's not checked over here, all right? Then once it is checked, we will put a value, and it's four for the Barbarian, I think, something like that, three or four. <clears throat> we'll be in here, and then all this does is it adds those two together to give you what your adjusted baseline is. So if I click on this right now, you'll see what happens. Just made that four, and now the adjustment is 18. I unclick it, it goes back to where it was. And it's like that on individual records. This one had Barbarian, so it's already stationed at four. If I unclicked it, it would go down to zero. That's pretty cool, huh? So we actually know, now, if I click any of these other ones, it doesn't do anything because it's only looking for the one that's for the barbarian. This expression is only looking to see if this particular one had been checked. So how do you do something like that? Well, it turns out we have the capability. Remember, there's this dot value uh, that's that's associated with the list spot, with uh, a multi-pick. Uh, and that's actually a record for each one of these. And we could actually query based on those records and we can write a, a procedure based on those records so that's another thing i'm going to show you in here too is how you can write your own functions 
that Access could use. There is no function to go out and figure out which, is, uh, which of these have been picked, all right? But there are some properties, hidden properties for the control that you can get to programmatically through Access Basic. And I'm going to show you a really quick routine where I did something like that, a real, real function that I did for that. But first, let's, let's explore this, okay? We have uh, our relationships, and so I've got the category for uh, the game character stat, which is could send a value to game character, which could send a value to game. All right, now let me show you a query. First off, let me show you a, a uh, I'm going to close that down. Well, no, I'll leave it open. Um, I have a report here. And it's nothing fancy here right now, but you see when I, when I click that, this parameter, remember I talked about a parameter query. Okay, I'm, I got this set up as a parameter query right now uh, just to show you how this works. I'm going to pick strength. That was one of the uh, stats, okay? And what it's going to do is it's going to generate a report. Oh, nothing for that report. I spell. I bet I spelled it wrong. Strength. Yeah. And you see what happened? It just came back with all the characters that have strength as their uh, as one of their attributes. So that, in other words, strength was checked in the in their category box and the games that they were involved in. So Fighter and Barbarian both have strength, and they were being used in game one and game three. So if I had somebody that I didn't use in a game, that wouldn't be listed because it's an inner, inner join. It's only going to show me where I actually had characters that had that strength and were in a game. That's what this report is doing. So how am I doing that? How am I making that happen? All right. Well, I've got a query here. Let's go ahead and look at it. And there it's got my, my three, my uh, my relationships basically are mirrored here, okay? It's showing that it's an inner join, right? So I brought back the name of the game. There's, there's a variable on the game called name and a variable called date. And they together make up the alternate key. So I brought back the name. Now, yeah, I could get an alias like we usually do, but this is the end point of it, so I really didn't need to do it. It's not like this is going to be passed to anything else. It all is consumed right here. So uh, I've got a game name, and the reason I did this, okay, people would sometimes look, some of you notice I do this sometimes. I've got a situation here where I've got category, TX, TXT start dash category and TXT dot start dash category twice, and I want to use both of those. A way to do that would be to make it into an expression, okay? And I decide I'm just going to do that on all of them because otherwise you may not know what, am I talking about the character name or the game name or whatever? I want you to know that I'm talking about the game name here, okay? And right now the caption that's associated with that field is just name. So this kind of overrides the caption. I want to make a game name. And one thing I've noticed, because this is going to be, uh, evaluate it as being a string all the time, uh, alphanumeric string. It's just there for display, basically, okay? Um, I have to put, I have to proceed it with, uh, what, I, what I'm doing here is I'm having a blank string before it, okay? So the game name will come back with, uh, by itself then, okay? And I had it, I do that on every single one of these that were, uh, I, I put a, a, uh, uh, blank string. Those are just two double quotes that are right next to each other, then an ampersand. So it's really concatenating nothing. But it, for some reason, this works, okay? If I don't do that, sometimes it doesn't work, okay? It won't, it'll come back with a name error for some reason, all right? But this always works, so I just got into the habit of doing this. And then you can see I've got the character and the category. So there, I got TXT category, but it's one from the game character. So I'm going to call it character. And then this one right here is the TXT star dash category for the game character stat. So I'm going to call this one stat. All right. And when it comes back, I want to show them all. But I want to show it ascending on first the game name, the game date, and then the character. Yeah, I do want the date to go from the earliest to the latest. And then the character. Okay. And I don't have to really worry about the stat doing on that, but I, I could. I mean, I, there I'm going to just bring them back in the order that they went in, basically. And then uh, 
I got this prompt. Which stat? Which stat are you talking about here? Uh, because, by the way, you'll only come back with one stat because I'm only prompting once. And I'll prompt for the stat and then it'll return it. So that's what it's going to do. It's prompting me for the stat. I could have had this. Uh, so I had a form. They had all of them, and they could pick it from the form and then launch this query. And then what I would do here is I would just reference the control on the form, and that query would run. So, so there's a, there's different ways to do this, okay? But I'm going to do it the easy way right now. I'm going to do it, uh, the cheap way, actually. Uh, if I was deploying this for somebody else to use, then I would probably uh, have a form with a control that had the multi that it, they could pick individual characters from and then launch the query. But here I'm just going to prompt and hope I don't make a spelling mistake like I did the other one. So that's what happens here. I'm going, yeah, I'm going to run it again. You can see I'm going to just do it from the query now. So if I do strength, you'll see that's the query results. And then what I did is I just used that query and generated this report. You know, go in there and you'll see that the query is the uh, is the uh, reports record source. And so that when I open that report. First thing it does is it runs the query. It asks me for the value of some strength. And it comes up back with those. Let's see, what are the other ones? I forget what the other stats are. Let's see, dexterity. Let's do dexterity. And we'll be back and run it again. Some people have asked me, how do you run it again? Well, you could go off of it and go back on like this if you want to <laughs> just does it or you just close it and run it again whatever you want but I'm going to do dexterity and there's one sort of dexterity the monk and the fighter they should pop up in different games and the monk and the fighter are in the same game game five so they they came up twice for that game yeah, two dexterities on that game. So that's kind of nice. That's how to do it in a report, okay? And what we basically did, so if you look back at that, if you go back and look at that query again, you see that those relationships are on those multi-picks, the dot value. So it's really going into that, that table that basically exists behind the scene. And saying which one of these are have a re which of those individual values do I have a relationship, so that later on you know when I use a multi pick it's actually uh, can you actually utilize those, so that's kind of nice. Um, but let's let's go back and look at the the main thing I wanted to show you in this. Um, so again, what I wanted to do and close this down while I'm at it. What I wanted to do was uh, on this game. I've got, I've got, uh, uh, you know, the lookup fields, lookup tables for each of those category tables, and then I've got a uh, subject table for the game itself. So, and if I didn't show you the game before, here's the the fields. It's got name, date, baseline value, which is decimal, and then. Uh, and then it's got the foreign key field and then our, our standard fields. The foreign key field for uh, the character game category. So what I want to do is I want to go to game. I'm going to open it up in design mode and show you what I did. So first off, I named this is this is the uh, the multi pick the list box. So I named that list box CLB game start character dash record identifier because that's what it's going to be associated with is the record identity, the foreign key field, right? And I also have a, uh, I have a select query on it, just like we did before, you know, where we have our category and description and all the other stuff that we do. We just used it on game character. All right. So remember what happens here. When I pick a value, what I basically get is the primary key value bound to this, right? I'm bounding the first column, which is the primary key in that query, right? When I pick multiples, I'm getting the primary key for each one of those, but it's not really bound to this control. It's really bound to those 
fields on the table that are hidden in the background, okay? In fact, I'll tell you what, one of the things I want to do, this will be kind of interesting. I'm going to go up here just for fun. I'm going to open up a text box and put it in here just so you can see what happens. And I am going to bound that to that. Oh, you know, to do this, I need to have the expression builder open. Let's go and open up its open up the, uh, the property sheet. And I'm going to go to control source because uh, I, I have to reference it. So I'm going to reference um, the, basically just the value of this control. Now, remember, it's multi-pick, okay? But I'm, so I'm going to remember, so each one of those actually do get it stored separately. But you're going to see that it combines it here. Um, and what am I looking for? I'm looking for C, L, B, where's it at? I know it's here. C, L, B, I'm just not seeing it right off the bat here. But I got a lot of stuff in here. Why is that? Mm. Am I not in the right place? No, I'm here. CLB. You know what? It would help if I spread this out a little bit. Sorry about this. Again, I'm off off script here. In fact, there is really no script. I'm kind of just doing this off the cuff. There it is. Okay. So I just want to bring back. Now, by the way, the default when you do that is to bring back the value. You could specify any property. You look over here, there's all these properties. You can get the value of any property. One of them in here is value. All right. If you double click on that, it's not, not going to do anything. It would just put that in there, okay? But you could put dot value, and it would do the same thing. There is a dot value property. So anyway, but we'll just leave it at that, okay? And don't mind this too much, okay? What I really want to just show you is I'm going to go in here now, open that up. And you see what it's got? It's got four, five, six, and eight. Druid has a primary key value of four. Fighter is 5, Monk is 6, Stranger Danger is 8. If I go hit Barbarian here, it's 1. Now I added 1 to it. Isn't that interesting? All right. But it turns out those are not alphanumeric characters, even though they look like it. Okay. The truth is that is a special, um, it's called an array variable. Okay. And it just so happens you can't do anything to this. You can't do a string operation to it. You can't use it in a derived. I mean, you could try to, but it's not going to do anything. You'll get error messages, okay? I mean, it'll let you see which ones are associated as if it's a list, but it's not. It's really in an array, and those array, each element in those arrays is associated with a record that's behind the scenes in that dot value table that was associated with that foreign key that this this uh, control is bound to. I know that's a lot to consider, okay? All right, so what I'm needed really though is some way to know what's been picked. Well, it turns out, again, we know a lot of these properties, right? We can go in here. Sorry about that, I always forget that guy escape out there. Um. You know, if I open up this control, you see all these properties, right, that exist. Ooh, I don't even want to do that. How did that happen? All these properties that exist for it, okay? And those are all accessible programmatically, all right? But there's a set of other properties that you don't see. And what I would recommend is sometime if you ever need to write a, a function that you want to go out and interrogate a list box, just go out and look up list box control on the Microsoft site. And it'll come back with all the properties that a list box has, okay? Um, one of the properties, uh, the property that I used here to create this, if you, well, let's look at this first before I do it, okay? First off, I named each of these boxes that I'm using, all right? CTB game dash baseline, CTB game baseline, uh, adjust the baseline, and then this one is CTB barbarian adjustment. All right, and if you look at this one right here, this adjusted baseline, it's the game baseline, whatever the value of that control is, plus the value of the adjusted barbarian control. All right, so that's a pretty simple one. This is the one that's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to open this up so you can see it better. And it's got an IF, okay, that's the IF statement. 
Okay, and now you know how an if statement works. If the if you give it a um, well, in fact, if you want to know how it works, just go to functions, do the built-in functions, and it's an inspection function. Is that right? No, that's not right. Where is if? It's a. It's in here somewhere. Let me see really quick. Where is the i if function? What would be a conversion function? Domain no here handling here handling yeah financial maybe it's just a general no it's, I thought it'd be an if an inspection function huh I guess oh here it is program flow okay oh they have switch and choose too I, I look at that sometime I usually always use the if but if I look at if it'll tell you down here that there's an expression that's first if that expression evaluates to true then the next parameter is the true part. Otherwise, it would be almost like the else. This third parameter would be the false part. Okay. What I want to do is I want to basically find out, is barbarian checked? Okay. And if it is, return a 4, otherwise return 0. So that's what the last part of this, this, zero, this 4 and 0 is. Okay. What about this part that says, is item selected and then... It's got the name of that text box control, comma one. I built this function. All right, what it's going, what it's doing, it's passing the name of the list box. So that way, I can use it for other ones if I want to. Okay, I can use this function for other ones. I'm passing the name of the list box that I want to ex explore, and I'm looking for the bound one of my bound values to be one. Okay, one is the primary key value for the barbarian. If I wanted some other one, I would put the other one in there. If I wanted uh, stranger danger, his primary key is eight, I would put eight in there. All right, but I want to get the barbarian in this case. So let's look at the function. And the function is in this thing that's called mod multi-value list box. If I open that up in design view, You'll see some access basic code. Now, again, I told you there wasn't, wasn't going to be any programming in this class. But those of you who are wanting to do something like this, there's sometimes that you just have to program. Okay. And truthfully, you can see this is not a very big program. I'm going to give you the pseudo explanation, pseudo code explanation of what's going on here. It's a function that's called is item list is item selected. And I'm passing in a control in the control was what I whatever it was named there and it's going to be assigned to a variable in this program called CTL list box control as a control by the way you can see this public is function that means I could get to it from anywhere in my program it I actually compiled it and it's it's in there now and can be accessed from anywhere I also pass as an integer a variable that I call int record identifier Okay, and by the way, this function itself is a Boolean. In other words, it's either true or it's it's a true or false. And I I put a little comment here that this function returns a Boolean true value if the pass control, in other words, the control that was passed into it, has a value uh, selected uh, corresponding to the bound integer value of the first column in the list box control. So it's only going to look for the first column okay here it's not going to go looking through all of them if i have multiple columns in that list box it's only going to do the first one remember the first one is not shown here because it's our, it's got our primary key value in it all right but it is there okay and we can look we could search on it i'm going to set the default for this function to be false so is item selected equals to false that means when the function ends if it didn't find one it would return false and by the way, false evaluates to be zero, okay? True, surprisingly, evaluates to be minus one. But we are just wanting to know, is it true or false? So that's good enough, okay, to say it's true or false here. We don't have to test to see what its uh, numeric value is, okay? Now, what I'm saying here is for each, uh, there's, a, there's a variable called uh, ver item. It's a variant that I set up here in this dimension statement, okay? Okay, and we want to say for each var item in control list box uh, control, 
Okay, so that's whatever list box I passed her. It's going to put that on there. That's what that variable is. Dot item selected. That's the property. Item selected is a property of the list control box. All right, so it's going to look at whatever list control box I I give it. It's going to look at one of the. It's going to look for the hidden property item selected. And it's going to do this for every single item that's in there, okay? So for all the possible picks that I have, it's going to execute this for, for next loop, okay? So where item will start at zero, and on the, on the first one, it'll be one, and it'll go in here, and it'll look for the selected item. And it would, actually, I'm sorry, let me step back there. It is, it'll, it'll, it'll just, as it goes through each one, where item will, will advance, basically, okay? It goes to the next var item. So it's a variant. It starts at zero, and it's just going to go one on each loop, okay? All right? And then, so it's going to go to the first first uh, value that's in my list box. And it's going to say, if the column, which is another hidden property on that, if column one, that's the column that's hidden, okay, that's the bound column for us, for the first item okay remember it's on the first one so this is basically an array count with with uh indexes index one dash one if that's equal to whatever i brought in here then set that to that thing to be true and go on and do the next and it's going to do it for all of them okay it's going to do it for all of them even if it finally does get one that's true it's going to do it for all of them because once it's true it's true right it could go on and finish up. Now, could I made it so that if it evaluated true, it stopped and just exited the function? You bet. I could have done that. But these control boxes are not that big, and usually you get through them really quick. So I should say these list boxes are big, aren't that big. They don't have that many values, and this would execute really fast, and it does. All right? And so then when it's finally done, and after it's done the loops, and it's finally... Now... If in doing this, it never found one of these that was equal to the record identifier, then the function, when it comes to the last one, it just ends, right? And it's still set to false. And if it's false, that thing would take the second value, which is zero. But because it's true, it's going to take the, the true part of that expression, and that's going to be equal to four. Isn't that neat? Pretty cool how quick that is, all right? So, again... And I go and close this down. I'm actually in the Access Basic browser right now. Uh, debugger, I should say. Okay. And so now I go back here. And you'll see, again, remember, all it is is a very simple, straightforward expression now that says if that I, I first, the first, I test the express, I figure out what the expression is. The expression is, is list, I'm sorry, is item selected for that list box control. And I'm looking for the the value that actually comes back with the primary key value one which is the barbarian okay so i'm saying i basically passed in the list box control and the barbarian's primary key to that function if it comes back true meaning that the barbarian was checked then it's going to give me a one I mean, it's going to be four i'm sorry it's going to be four if it comes back unchecked yeah the barbarian isn't checked then it's going to give me zero that's what this IIF statement does. Okay, so that's it. Pretty much that's it. And so then when I go in here and I open it up in regular mode, you'll see Barbarian is checked there. So it's giving me four, right? I uncheck Barbarian, and it gives me zero. Now, that is the one other thing I had to do to make that happen, all right? Because originally when I did this, it worked, you know, it came, oh, zero, and the ones that had Barbarian were coming back for. But when I went and checked it, nothing happened, all right? It's because I have to actually trigger the after update to go out and re-query this control, and then it, it actually updates, okay? So let me show you that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. All right, so let's go over here, and I'm opening up the properties again for that. And if I go down, you'll see after update. That means that the a value has either been checked or unchecked. We don't. It could doesn't matter which one it is. Okay, that control actually changed in value. All right, somehow. 
And here's what we do then. On the after update, we issue a requery of the control that's holding that barbarian adjustment value. So the, the thing that's holding the zero or the four, CTB, barbarian adjustment, we just say requery it. And then it'll update to what it should be based on whether it's checked or not. So again, what happens here is I go in and I uncheck this. The after update fires. It goes it says requery this, and it becomes zero. Now when I check it on, after update fires again. This comes, it basically requeries this. Now it's four. That's because that's what that expression evaluated to. So seems like a lot of work. But really isn't, okay? It, this took me maybe about 10 minutes after I, I, truthfully, I didn't even know about, I didn't know about the hidden properties on the list box. That was something that was new to me. But I found the documentation on it, and, I, and man, it was just like, wow, I could do a lot with that. And it occurred to me that, now, there was no way to just say was barbarians checked or barbarians not. I had to write a function to do it. But you could see, even though it did take a little bit of coding, the coding wasn't that difficult. It wasn't that hard. And it turns out there are, there are examples all over the Internet on how to do things like that. They could just go find somebody else's code, you know, and then tailor it for your, customize it for your needs. So that's it. I think that's all I had to show you on that one. And I probably will have a couple more yet before this is done. Uh, but that was one that came up here recently, and I thought it would be a nice way to show you several different uh, things that we haven't covered yet in class. So. Thanks a lot.